Matt is the founder and the uh, CEO of Kinetic, a uh, IT managed service provider, which works on a fixed price basis. Uh, Matt's also a network security expert. He's written several books on this subject, and I think it holds at least one patent. Um, but uh, Matt's here actually not to talk about security. I asked Matt to come here to talk about the secret sauce behind Kinetic, behind its success, and that is metrics. So Matt? All right, so uh, I'm gonna give you the same caveats that I am a terrible public speaker. Uh, I'm also gonna apologize for the PowerPoint slides. I disagree with the way PowerPoint is typically used. I think it should include meaning, but I know that this is gonna be giant slabs of text and I'm going to stand up here and read it to you. I know that's horrible practice, but uh, I've never done this format before, so that's what you get. So um, my company is an IT services provider. We operate a help desk. You guys have all had a computer problem, and you've called into a help desk, and you've gotten some quality of support that varies widely. Sometimes a guy's just trying to get you off the phone. Sometimes they're really helpful, and they, and they actually fix your problem. Uh, measurement, how those guys are being measured is usually why they're behaving the way they are. First of all, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, what you're measuring when you measure. You're measuring data. Uh, it's, a, it's a recorded states in a system collected from sensors automatically. Information is what data becomes when we look at it and use it. When we begin to make, a, uh, when we begin to use data, it becomes information and informs our decisions. Knowledge is that boiled down to a fact. Um, so why do we measure? We measure um, so that we can avoid acting on assumptions, suspicions, anecdotes, fallacies, just like I think uh, I should get a better car. I don't know if it's safe. Well, the National Highway System uh, Transportation Board measures that so you know. Um, measurement is really important to that. So before we started measuring things at Kinetic, we had occasional customer service issues that would come up to me three or four a year, I think. I don't know, I wasn't measuring. Uh, we, we felt like we were doing a good job and our customers seemed to like us. Our response to customer service issues was we're gonna really, really, really try to do better in the future. Um, measuring human performance is a game that humans like to play. All games are just measures of performance. That's what they all are. Uh, if you give a human a, measure, a measurement and tell them they're being measured by it, they will start to game it. Um, so businesses, governments, all of those things are products of human activity and when you measure them, you, uh, you can change them. The observer effect is, common, is commonly known in physics. When you measure something, you change it. Um, because people, when they're measured in terms of human performance, know that they're being measured, they also change what they're doing. And so anytime you measure a person, you're gonna change their behavior. So, <laughs> the inverse observer effect is uh, pretty interesting. To affect change, all you have to do is change your measurement that incorporates the goal that you want to have your system respond to. Um, humans are always gonna drive the measurement towards the goalpost, whatever it is. Um, so, um, when we first started measuring what we call SLA, we went from 78% of the tickets being responded to in two hours, which is what we were promising our customers. We were making what we promised to our customers 78% of the time to 100% within um, the very first month. And that was because people started to game it. What you choose to measure creates the rules of the game that you're creating. Uh, you get to choose your goalpost. That's the best part about it. Uh, humans in the system will always drive performance. I think I've made that point about 15 times. Um, be certain that the goalpost is exactly what you want to accomplish. That's the key to picking good measurements. There's always a goal. You have to choose your measurements wisely because the goal hidden in the measurement is the change that you're gonna get. If you didn't choose the goal in your measurement, one will be assigned to you by nature or by your uh, adversaries and you will be accountable for what happens when you implement that measurement. Useful metrics are raw data that is changed into information reflecting progress towards organizational goals. They're not raw data. Um, choose a goal, determine the data points that drive you to that, and then create a formula that turns it into the metric that you want. And only display the formulated information so that people aren't driving towards the natural goal that's embedded in the raw data. Bad metrics are raw data. Um, the organized goal is not inherent in the measure, drives performance to the measurement, which is not what you want. It punishes correct behavior with lower scores, that's key. Uh, and uh, usually they're far too distant to ever reach. The needle can't be meaningfully moved. People want to win the game. 
So a horrible metric that we have in the IT industry is called time to response. Um, it's how long did it take an IT guy to respond? The pro there are numerous problems with this. First of all, it's raw data. Uh, you can still miss it uh, very easily, and, and because the number is averaged, look like you're doing okay. Um, I don't know. <laughs> this was bound to happen. I'll send this PowerPoint to everybody. <laughs> uh, but first call closure is another terrible metric. It's how many, how many um, calls were closed by the first person that answered. The problem is zero is a bad number, never escalate, and one is a bad number, always escalate. So you don't know which way you're supposed to move the needle. Terrible measure. So goalposts are always zero or one in a good, in a good metric. It's either zero defects or it's 100% success, right? Uh, it never cr punishes correct behavior. It recasts raw data into algorithms that reflect your goals. Perfection is always the goal and should be reachable or very nearly reachable, and that makes them self-rewarding, which is a big key. Um, we measure what's called SLA. We take um, time to respond to tickets, and we turn that into um, a number that is basically how many did we miss after two hours. So TTR is our raw data, um, but what we do is say, you've got two hours. This ticket does not have to even be looked at for two hours. Um, and, and if you answer it by then, then you still win. What we've been able to do, I'm just going to <laughs> avoid that. The right answer here was we don't measure things that cause us to, to, to do bad goals, even if the industry says that this is what everybody measures. Um, so <laughs> apply this to uh, only human performance systems. Do not game scientific data. That's a bad thing. Um, <laughs> Pick your goalposts, ensure that there's no perverse incentive, um, and remember a couple of key things. If you're measuring raw data, you're almost certainly measuring the wrong thing because there is a goal in there, and if it's not your organizational goal, it's the change you're gonna get anyway. So always, always, always take raw measures when you're talking about human performance and recast them into a form that embeds your organizational goals. Those are easy to figure out what your organizational goals are. They're the promises that you make to your customers. It's what you tell your customer you're gonna do. That's your metric. Recast that using raw data. Publish your recast metrics instead of the raw data, and then uh, people can't come at you and, you know, that pe people can't assign you their measures of your performance and then claim that you're doing a bad job because of it. So, that was really fast. Was that six minutes? <laughs>